estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Nesse caminho eu não desisto Estou seguindo a Jesus Cristo Atrás não volto, não volto não Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Jesus é o guia onipotente Atrás o mundo, Jesus à frente Atrás não volto, não volto não And let's give Jesus a beautiful round of applause Dear brethren, we're focusing on two very important studies these days. And well, first, let's start or restart uh, with Psalm 149, the second to last Psalm. And we are going to begin with verse number five. The Lord God says the following through the writer. Let the saints be joyful in glory. When you see the glory of God, just as we have been seeing, God has been recovering people who were completely destroyed, healing the sick, delivering the captives, and prospering. The glory of God is doing this beautiful work. We must be joyful in this glory, because that's when we will be strong. We will have the capacity to overcome all our temptations. And he also says, let them sing aloud in their beds. Beds means God's rest. It's when you lay down your head at night to sleep. How are you going to sleep singing with joy? You must, in the bed, in the rest, and in the faith that God gives you, in this courage, this boldness where there's no room for fear at all, there's no trace of fear, you must be singing with joy because God has given us the victory. But Dr. Swides, I can't do it. It's because you haven't understood God's plan yet. The moment you understand it, it will enable you. All this we have seen before. Then he says the following. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth or throat, that is very important. The kind of songs that really, really touch you. Don't let them be away from your mouth. Be constantly talking about them and meditating on them. Those revelations that make you thank God for coming to know the gospel. The gospel isn't some religion. The Apostle Paul said that the gospel is the power of God. The word gospel means the good news. It's what Jesus Christ did. And when you have this good news inside your mouth, you will do exactly the following. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is like a double-edged sword. It pierces the soul from the spirit and joints and marrow. It frees you from tation. It protects you from suffering. It frees you from sickness. The word operates in such a powerful way that when people believe in the blink of an eye, the past stays in the past. It doesn't ever come back. And people receive the blessing of the Lord God. And what is the purpose of all this? Let's read the best part here. Look, to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, the hosts of hell, the actions of the demons. We must take vengeance. We must execute the vengeance of God. We must not allow these things to oppress us, to tie us up, or to make us suffer. To the contrary, we must advance. If we were healed by the wounds of Jesus, just like the Word of God says, let's remain healed. Let's exercise our authority. Let's demand all evil to leave. Let's command it to leave. And victory will be ours in the name of the Lord Jesus. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To punish these evil spirits who come and attack and destroy many people. Now the next verse is very important. I've covered all this before. Why does God have all of this in store for us? He wants us to connect with him and he wants all the high praises to be in our mouth and the sword, which is the word of God, in our hands. So here, God is revealing a warrior, a very successful one, with his sword. That's how he will win the battle. To bind their kings with chains. Brethren, this is something really important. Jesus said the following. No one can enter a strong man's house unless they first bind him or tie up his hands. Chains are the handcuffs that were used in the past. So the kings of perversity, these demons, when you go pray for someone, 
You must cast them out in the name of Jesus because you already have the weapon to bind the kings with chains. To bind their kings with chains. Now, from this moment on, they're reduced to nothing. Those who have experience with deliverance, when they see someone very disturbed, what should they do? Demon, all your strength is gone. In that moment, the demon loses its strength. Whoever has authority doesn't ask. They determine, and they're not afraid. If you come close to a dog in fear, even a mutt, but if you come close with confidence, that's it. If you surrender, the dog will jump on you. If you lift your head up and give orders, things are completely different. And here, it could be that you don't know how to give orders. But in the spiritual world, when you say in the name of Jesus, it's over, folks. You've put the power of God into action. The bosses of the spiritual thieves that are attacking you, they must be arrested with chains. And their nobles, the most specialist demons from hell, those who are nothing but horrible things with fetters of iron. We must tie them up by their feet and they won't be able to operate anymore. You will paralyze all the actions of the enemy. It is necessary to learn how God wants us to do his work because by doing his work this way, we will be successful and we will live well. Amen. Let's now watch what happened in my crusades in Recife. Please play it. You will see thousands of people. You will see God operating. Please, in the name of Jesus. Now it's the city of Recife's turn to celebrate the presence of God through Dr. Suarez's visit. By glorifying the Lord, we become better people. I will get better day after day because my mouth is full of his praises. I can then praise God. I can glorify my Father, and I will do it, and he will give me his blessing. After the forgiveness prayer, the heart is ready to fight against evil and determine healing, step by step in the walk of faith. Look, this is beautiful. If you want to be happy, leave this dirty world behind. Come with me, come and know my Savior. Amen. The blessing of God was so great that this man got so excited and decided to run around. I had a problem in my knees, arthrosis. How did you walk before the prayer? It was very bad. Please show me how it was. I'd walk like this. When I when I tried to walk, my knees would they lock. They would lock up. So yes. how did you walk when you were locked? Show us. It was just like this. Like this. So walk normally now, brother. Glory to what God. Was that? Glory to God. Glory to God. Come here, Leonardo. And let's all run the victory round. And let's all run. What was locked is now unlocked. Let's give Jesus a hand. What was your problem? I had a kidney stone and I could barely walk, but now I'm How fine. How did you walk before? Show it to us. Like this. Walk normally now, sister. Look at this, folks. Glory to God. Jesus healed her. It's been a year since I felt pain in my bones because of chikungunya and I fell. This was saturated down here and it was very heavy. Thanks to Jesus, after you prayed, everything left. The pain just completely. left now. So walk normally now. I want to see it. Glory to God. She has received her deliverance, folks. I felt pain in my legs, a lot of pain. And this morning, Satan said, we're not going. I replied, why am I not going? I am on my way. How were you walking before? I couldn't even get up. How are you walking now? Now I'm steady as a rock. Oh, glory to God. This is so beautiful. Thanks to Jesus, none of them needs help to walk. Why did you use this crutch? Because I couldn't walk, and on top of that, I have bad knee. I feel pain all over my for body. For how long have you been suffering? Well, I've been suffering for 45 years. 45 years, but for now, how long have you been using a crutch? Six months. Six months. How did you get here today? Show it to us. I got here like this. You couldn't walk differently. No, I but couldn't. But Jesus healed you now. He did. So now walk in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. He will complete his work, sister, believe it. Sister, for how long have you had this crutch? Eight years. And why? I had arthrosis, arthritis, several How did you walk things. before? No, no, I couldn't. Like that. And you couldn't walk without the no, crutch? No, no, I couldn't. So put it on your shoulder now. Will you walk now? I will. Yes, 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 go on. 
Oh, glory to God. I fell on the bus. It was an accident. It's been three years. Three years? Almost four now. How did you walk before? Show us. I had a joint effusion, so I'd walk like this. My legs weren't strong enough. So how did you walk? Walk and show it to us. Like this. Like that. Okay, stop. Did Jesus heal you? He did. So hold your crutch so you can walk home now. Ha <laughs> ha! All these people are living testimonies of what God does. All of them carry on their shoulders the trophy of their victory with Jesus. And let's give the Lord a hand, right, folks? Brethren, this is available to all of us. All that we've heard here, all that's in Psalm 149 should be put into practice to execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains. That's why we've been anointed and their nobles with fetters of iron. Let's obey the Lord because he has been blessing us. Now, let me speak very quickly to the people in Minas Gerais. Ah, well, first, São Paulo. This Saturday will be the Saturday of Wonders. Come and bring those who are in need at our headquarters on Schwann Street 791 at 9 a.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. And on Sunday, six powerful meetings, 7, 9, and 11 a.m., 2 and 4 p.m. with me, Pastor Jaime, at 6 p.m. And all of them begin 20 minutes early. And next week, we will be in Minas Gerais. We'll be making the announcements shortly. The show's are recorded ahead of time. We didn't have all the information yet, but it will be a great blessing. All of you from Minas, please come. It will be amazing. Wow, Dr. Suarez, are you uh, uh, traveling non-stop? No, I'm announcing to the world that Jesus is the solution. There's a big difference, and we'll keep doing that for a long time. Now let's turn to 2 Chronicles 26. Here we'll read about King Uz Uzziah's reign. He reigned for 55 years. This man had his ups and downs, but he had many ups in the beginning of his life, but he didn't do all he was supposed to do. But he was great before the Lord God. And it says here, verse number five, he sought God in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. When you listen to a preacher who really seeks God and God gives him wisdom in his revelations, and you seek God in these revelations, you will go far. But when you start questioning what the Lord has been speaking, what the Lord is doing, you're not going anywhere. And so this man here called Uzziah was able to do that. And as long as he sought the Lord, God made him prosper. He was only 16 when he began um, to reign and he reigned until he was 71. And so God made him prosper. And why? Now he went out and made war against the Philistines. Look how his prosperity happened. And at that time, brethren, the people were very rascal. They wanted to steal the harvest from each other and oppress. And it's like that until today, right? If not by force, they do it through treaties or through pressure. The world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And this is a wrong way of doing things. And we must always have someone that stands firm to lead us in the past path of peace and freedom. So back in those days, he went out and made war against the Philistines and broke down the wall of Gath, the wall of Jabne, and the wall of Ashdod, and he built cities around Ashdod and among the Philistines. God helped him against the Philistines, against the Arabians, who lived in Gerbaal, and against the Meunites. Also the Ammonites brought tribute to Uzziah. His fame spread as far as the entrance of Egypt, for he became exceedingly strong. We've studied all this already. I'm reading it to you before we go into something new. And Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate, at the valley gate, and at the corner buttress of the wall. Then he fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. He dug many wells, for he had much livestock, both in the lowlands and in the plains. He also had farmers and vine dressers in the mountains and in Carmel, for he loved the soul. This man started a great revolution in his country back in those days. We're talking about 2,600 years ago. Imagine, brethren, oh, imagine if this man was here today. He'd take our country and cause a great revolution. He'd make all of us prosper. Moreover, Uzziah had an army of fighting men who went out to war by companies according to the number on their roll as prepared by Jael and scribe the Masaya, the officer, 
under the hand of Hananiah, one of the king's captains. The total number of chief officers of the mighty men of valor was 2,600. And under their authority was an army of 307,500 that made war with mighty power to help the king against the enemy. How about today? How about today, Dr. Suarez? Is it possible to have this kind of army? We have a larger one. Brethren, we have the power of God at our disposal. When we are completely under the will of God, we should never save our strength. We must concentrate ourselves to God and then pray and use everything the Lord has given to us. We should rebuke the evil one and put him back in his place, take hold of our position in Christ, and we will end up victorious. Then Uzziah prepared for them, for the entire army, shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and slings to cast stones. This was how far was war was fought back then, clubs, spears, and slings, and they would go out for war, and they never lost a single battle. And why did this happen? Because this man decided to seek the Lord. Decide to seek the Lord, and you will see what God will do in your life. Brethren, God wants our victory. We are the warriors of the Lord that will cause this world to understand the word of God. And when we do that, victory comes in the name of Jesus. So he prepared the army, and on top of preparing the army, he prepared shields, spears, helmets, body armor, bows, and slings to cast stones. And he made devices in Jerusalem invented by skillful men. Back at that time, look how this man was ahead of his time. To be on the towers and the corners to shoot arrows. It wasn't just a few arrows. It was thousands of arrows and large stones. So his fame spread far and wide. For he was marvelously helped till he became strong. Brethren, God wants us to be strong. Not just to make us strong. He wants us to stay strong. By staying strong, he, we will do his will. There are so many people in need. I've been preaching the gospel for almost 50 years now. I'm breaking the 50-year barrier, praying for people, casting out demons, healing the sick. And day by day, we see God renewing everything. He's doing again things that you experience today. We've enjoyed in the beginning of our ministry, unimaginable things that just didn't happen. I remember once in São Gonçalo, and I'd love it if this mom was watching, and her daughter as well, of course. This happened 38 years ago. A mom came to us, her daughter was born, and she had no bones. She was like a ball of flesh lying in her bed, and she didn't die by a miracle. You know that the bones get stronger, even inside the mother's womb. But that didn't happen to her. She was just a flaccid cartilage, like a ball. So we prayed there, and a week later, the mom came and said, my daughter now has bones. She is moving her entire body. I never saw this lady again. And there's many others. I remember this other girl I met last time in São José do Rio Preto. The miracle happened here in the city of São Paulo. The girl's legs faced the opposite ways. She would never be able to stand up. She was exactly like this, look. And on the six equipment the doctor recommended, trying to straighten her legs, that's not how you do it. Her dad went on television with her mom and he testified this miracle. I wish I could revive this miracle. I wonder where this girl is. I even asked people to look around if they can find the tapes from back then to show you that beautiful testimony. They found some from the past, but I needed more because this was recorded and I think God may have preserved them. So these people who lived this miracle should get in touch so that we can try to meet them. And this girl who today must be 38, 40 years old, I don't know, she was two years old when it happened. This was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. Her mother-in-law wrote, her dear daughter-in-law, there's a pastor on television. He does this, this and that. God has been using him. Don't mention it to my son because he's from another religion and won't like it. This was very serious. The mom woke up in the morning. She had changed the diapers. She turned the TV on, turned her back to the crib, and the baby was sitting up in the crib. She wasn't dressed yet, and so she was watching 
And she said, Pastor, I had never heard about Jesus before. I said, if you get to know Jesus from the Bible, Jesus of Nazareth, who silenced the waters of the sea, who fed thousands of people, who healed the blind and the deaf, he'll solve all your problems. Dr. Suarez, I began to punch my bed. Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in you. You can heal my daughter and so on. When I realized I was praying like this, the show was over. I turned back and I couldn't believe it. She was standing, brethren. Oh, brothers, oh, I remember. It was as if we had rehearsed all that. She was in her daddy's lap. I hope I can find this tape so you can see her in her daddy's lap. She simply did this and jumped out and she went before the camera and did this. Just as if we had taught her. Even the director of the TV channel ran from his room to see this. He was watching from an internal camera. He wanted to see what was happening. The cameramen were all weeping right there. It was a beautiful miracle. This is the God we believe in. We began the work and he wants us to be strong. He doesn't want us to be weak because the joy of the Lord is our strength. You need to find this joy. What did we just read in Psalm 149? It's in verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. The moment the glory of God comes, don't shut yourself down. Rejoice. Let them sing aloud on their beds. You're in God's rest. Sing along with the joy of the Lord. This is not the joy of men. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword, which is the word of God, in their hand. So you can use it. You can surely be used. He has used me in my entire life and he wants to keep using. I'd like to pray with you now in the name of Jesus. The Lord will give us victory. So I will say a prayer in a moment. Today we will take communion here and God will fulfill his word here in the name of Jesus. Um, let me say the following to all of you right now. I'd like you to watch some beautiful testimonies from people who have amazing testimonies every day, not just those who sponsor us in Brazil, but also around the world. Please go ahead and play the first testimony. We help our ministry to take the gospel to all who need. After they get to know Christ, people also feel the call and begin sponsoring. Hi, my name is Magali Litano. I'm from Lima, Peru. When I began watching the Faith Show, and I came to know about, about the sponsors, I decided to also become a sponsor. And God blessed my life, and I was able to pay $17,000 in debt, brethren. I am very thankful to God. He has been doing great things in my life and in my family, and I am very thankful for the life of Dr. Suarez. Dr. Suarez always says that to sponsor doesn't mean to buy a blessing, but rest assured that God rewards those who seek Him with all their heart and are faithful to His work. When I began going to the Grace of God Church, I would watch Dr. Suarez all the time on TV and he would speak greatly to my heart. I felt the call to become a sponsor, not to receive blessings, but I signed up so other people could be evangelized. And the Lord is working wonders in my life. Testimonies from missionaries and we would constantly see our brothers from church testifying. And I said, whoa, they are, they are testifying. I want to testify as well. So we decided to sponsor our son. And more than that, we have the benefit of being able to help the work, right? So it, it is able to reach millions of people. I was watching Dr. Suarez on TV, right? And God touched me. And back then we were in a tough financial situation. And every time I heard doctor, my heart was touched and God's been providing for all our needs. During all these years that I've been a sponsor, I've seen the hand of God caring for my finances in every moment that I've been faithful to the Lord. I've never given up on my calling. I believe that God was with me. It's extremely gratifying to be able to see that through our contribution, we are conquering souls. Because since I don't have the availability to go and evangelize, I believe that through my faithfulness and my sponsorship, I am helping the work to grow and the word to, the word to be preached to the four corners of the globe. We're not helping for our own benefit, but to conquer souls for Jesus and also so they can keep the television shows on the air. And we are planting very small seeds. And because of the seeds, and I'm a fruit of them, I believe that this work must go on. God chose this team to evangelize with Dr. Suarez. Together, we can reach a lot more than what has been seen until now. And look, this is a great work, folks. 
You who are a sponsor, if you could go to the bank this week, I'd be very grateful because this is a very important week for us and we will overcome. Let me speak to those in Minas. I will be there next week. You can look up the addresses later, the locations, and thanks to God for that. And let me just address as well the, the people in Curitiba, Paraná. I will be there on the 23rd at 3 p.m. at Tori Space. This is at the Paraná Club, President Kennedy, 2337, at 7.30 p.m. in Paranagua at Mario Rook Square. This will be an amazing time together. And we will be also um, on Monday, the 24th, in Ponta Grossa, the, then Guarapuava at Guarapuava Gymnasium, then 4 p.m. in Apucarana, and then in Londrina. Then, on the 25th in Maringá, Foz de Iguaçu, Toledo, and Cascavel. I'll give you the addresses later. And then, I'll be back in Sao Paulo. These days, I'm looking forward to visiting many people. Let me tell you something that happened in Apu, Apucarana. I would love it if you could meet again with this boy. This happened around 15 or 20 years ago. The boy was born deaf, um, deaf, and he couldn't speak. He didn't speak a word and didn't make any sounds. He didn't hear anything as well. So his family taught him to speak like this. La, 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 la. He began communicating, but didn't understand anything. I mean, he, he, he couldn't speak because he was totally deaf. People who are deaf, they can't speak because they can't hear. But they taught him. He spoke just like foreigners when they try to learn our language with lots of difficulty. So when he was healed, he was like, uh, 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 uh. So I said to him, I'm going to talk and you will repeat. He replied, I'm going to talk and you will repeat. <laughs> I said, no, I'm going to talk. No, I'm going to talk. <laughs> he just repeat everything. Eh? So I got close to his ear and I said, one. He said, no, 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 just noises. Huh? <laughs> no. no, 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 no. So I said, one. And he repeated, one, two, more or less, three. He almost couldn't say four. He said, or. I said, he catching the sounds, and it was amazing. Today, he must be 30-something. He was around 10 or 11 back then, and I'd love to meet him as well to see how he is doing. It is great to share these cases with you. I will begin these crusades, and the Lord will surely bless us in a very powerful way. And glory to God for that. We will take communion in a while, but I'd like to ask you, who are sponsors, to make a vow with God, and that you'd go to the bank this week still so we can fulfill the good word of the Lord. If you don't have a bank slip, go to a NedBank agency and ask the people there. I'd like to make a deposit to the following branch code. 103-910. 103-910. The account number is 101-191-9540. 101-191-9540. If you're not a sponsor yet, they're passing out the forms right now. You can take one and sign up right now. And to participate in this wonderful battle that we are fighting against the forces of evil. All of this, if you feel the call, if you don't feel it, I won't ask for your help. But I'm very benevolent, Dr. Swadis. Then look for a charity institution and contribute. This is a ministry. If God has given you this ministry, then I want you. Because then you will also receive a award for the ministry God has given to you. And so... You who are at home, give us a call. Here's our helpline, 27021-911-5676. 27021-911-5676. Our WhatsApp is 27079496937. 27079496937. This is it, and it's enough in the name of Jesus. While I'm talking to all of you, I'm going to ask right now, for the first question that we have prepared for you, I'd like to reply to these people who have been contacting us. I would like to help them. Let's see the first question, shall we? Dr. Suarez, why is it so hard to take our family to church? I don't know. My family, it was easy. No, I don't mean just my kids. The kids, we teach them, right? So, sometimes they're even afraid. But it's not that. I'm talking about my parents and my siblings. First, I began calling out to God for them. Because I read when I was still young, you know. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. I said, God, I'm here. Now bring my dad and my mom. I've mentioned that my mom didn't like Christians at all, right? So, 
When I was 16, I moved to Rio de Janeiro. I was from Espírito Santo. And when I went back to visit her, she missed me a lot. She'd hug me. We were great friends. And then I'd take advantage and say, Mom, I'd like to tell you something amazing. What is it? I'd like to tell her a miracle from the church. She'd pretend that she hadn't heard it. <laughs> and little by little, she changed. And I baptized her in the waters. I baptized my dad and my whole family was saved. So double check if you believe in the Lord Jesus. Because if you really believe, as the Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. Second question, please. Dr. Soares, I hurt your sister in Christ, and I, I asked her to forgive me, but she didn't forgive me. What should I do? Now, take care so you won't hurt her again. Allow God, allow God to work in her heart. I mean, and when it's the right time, she will look for you and it'll be okay. Because when we hurt people, it's very sad, you know? I mean, she's your sister in, in Christ, but she's also being treated by God. The enemy is working on both fronts. First, he caused you to hurt her. Now he's causing her to feel hurt and to treat you badly. Look, one is hurting the other. Since God has already worked here, he's now working here. So he's working on both fronts as well. And in a while, it'll be solved. But some people, let me tell you, you should forgive them, but not remain close to them because they're complicated and they know how to provoke, right? So walk away a little because it's all good just because you forgave so you don't have to be together all the time. By the way, the Bible tells us, seldom set your foot in your neighbor's house. Otherwise, he'll get tired of you. So receive this word from God. Now let's see. Eliana, are you around? I'm here, Dr. Suarez. And what's the movie of the it's month? It's a movie for all who want to know the power of prayer. It's called Prayer Doesn't Fail. All right. So after the service, make a visit next door. There's many products there. And in Rio, there's a Grace store as well. And you can also go online and buy your products from anywhere around the world. Many people are doing this. With our helpline, we, you can call and ask for information. 27021-911-5676. What's up? It's 27079-496-9037. Check out the online store. On the internet, it's at ongracesouthafrica.com. You can go there and purchase as if you were at the physical store. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus, let's watch the Grace TV moment. I'm speeding things up because I want to take communion with you. Please play the Grace TV moment. We decided to install it because we saw that we needed to learn more about the Word. The Word says, let us pursue the knowledge of God. So we took this initiative. Sometimes we aren't able to come to every service and sometimes even our neighbors, when they come to make us a visit, we put on one of Dr. Suarez's shows or a pastor preaching and saying a prayer and the person becomes interested, right? So it has been a blessing both to my family and to others as well. And through Grace TV, we've had great spiritual growth, right? Especially because each pastor has their way of preaching and sometimes the same verse is preached by a different pastor and God increases the knowledge we have. Grace TV is a way to have our eyes fixed on the one and only God who blesses us every day, who is taking care of us. Such a wise lady, eh, folks? See, she's evangelizing her neighbors. That's the purpose for Grace TV as well, to evangelize everybody and to evangelize your own life because the channels are 24-7, the Christian ones, and that's where you can watch good sermons. There's a Bible channel as well. In it, the Bible is read in a very simple and clear way, and so you can keep up with the reading and, and eat those words. God will reveal things There's the prayer channel, which is also 24-7. You can call them, see, and you can see the person who's on the other side. Then you give them your name and they will pray specifically for you. All this will make a great difference. How many here already have Grace TV at home? Raise your hand, right? Oh, is it good or bad, folks? It's great. Glory to God for that. And those who don't have it, well, Dr. Swedish, there's a monthly payment. Don't even mention it. We have a fixed price that's really affordable. This is only to keep it on the air. Well, Dr. Suarez, Christian stuff is really bad. Stop with that nonsense. In 2012, there was this poll and we were number one. In 13 and 14, I don't know why they didn't do it. They did it again in 2015, we won again. They did it in 16, we won again. 
among all the cable TV providers, cable, DTH, all of them. In 2017, they did it. We won for the fourth time. It is really good. The image, all its perfect programs. There's nothing better. We don't have any immoral channels. Your kids won't watch it and you won't be full of these things, these dirty things in your head. There's the best channels in the world and there's the Christian channels. How about the price? The option with the Christian channels is just a few rands a day. If we wanted to explore people, this would be the most expensive option because Christians want it. No, we want everyone to have it so all can receive the best. And so what can you buy with a few rands? If you go to a restaurant and order a burger, it costs 30 to 40 rands. It depends where you go. So Grace TV daily cost is almost like 10, 10 days of Grace TV costs about, about a sandwich. That's it. It's like a sandwich divided in 10 parts. This is how easy it is to have Grace TV. But the enemy doesn't want this. The enemy wants all who seek God to say, I don't need this. Yes, you do. The show of the day is repeated 24 times on one of the channels. Another channel displays 20 years of shows, and we're preparing another channel, Speak Up Friend channel, so you can also watch Speak Up Friend at home 24 hours a day. Are you at home? Call our helpline 27021 911 Or you can also send us a WhatsApp message at 27 079496937. Our website is ongracesouthafrica.com. Again, our WhatsApp is 27079496937. Now, I'd like to go ahead and say a prayer, preparing all of you for communion. You who are at home, let me speak to all of you at home. I'd like all of you to take part in communion here. Do you have some grape juice and a piece of bread? Go get it. I don't have grape juice. If you don't have it, I didn't give you a heads up. Take some water because Jesus can transform your glass of water spiritually into some wine. Because the wine we drink, the grape juice, it represents the blood of Christ. Wine was never the blood of Christ, but it is a symbol. The water in this case will also be a symbol. But I will ask God to transform it as if it were wine instead. So let me pray right now. Father, I'd like all of us to take part. And these people who don't have Jesus as their Savior yet, who aren't doing well, spiritually speaking, oh my God, who slipped and fell, who did what they shouldn't have done, and they regret it. They're confessing right now. Forgive them. My God, cleanse these hearts from any evil. I'm asking in the name of Jesus. Father, these people who don't have you in their hearts can't participate if they haven't accepted you yet, but it's what they want, so save them right now. They are making an alliance with you. Give them salvation in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen. Before they hand the elements out, let me read uh, here uh, 1 Corinthians 11.23 and on. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. So now you can hand out the elements that the Swedes will be singing in the background. Christ has already prepared us the food that he brought us, and you can sing along and we will participate together. I will continue guiding the service in the name of Jesus. This is your moment now. If you've asked for forgiveness, believe. 
If you confess your sins, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you. If you are going to participate or not, sing along. He multiplied a few bread. The disciples came back without catching any fish. Going back to the beach, Come take communion, the Master's calling. Let me ask, is there anyone who'd like to participate what was left out? Do all of you have wine? Let's stand up now so we can all participate. On the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and he said, This is my body which is broken for you. Raise your bread to heaven, Father. We are here today to participate in the springtime communion. It's a season where there is life renewal, when there's sowing to reap during summer. Father, we want to sow faith, not just inside our hearts, but for this broken world. God, look to the millions of people who are watching our shows. Look to the threats we've been receiving. Don't let us be discouraged. My God, we are sowing faith inside these hearts. It's springtime for them. It's a time to rejoice. Spiritually speaking, the birds are singing and the flowers are blooming. Oh my God. Those hearts will be just like ours. We will be standing before you to the right side of Jesus to enter the kingdom that's been prepared since the foundation of the world. Father, so many, even in our country, don't know you yet. We are raising their seeds now. And I ask you, sanctify this communion time as the communion that will change all humanity. In the name of Jesus, we bless this bread and we eat it. So it becomes one body with our bodies and bone with our bones, muscle with our muscles, skin with our skin. Father, it's for your glory. You can all eat the bread. You can eat now in the name of Christ. Father, oh dear Father, the wine we're holding now represents the blood of Christ, the pure blood, the all-powerful blood that makes us defeat the enemy through it. Father. I include all those who are lost throughout the nations, nations that are at war against you, Father. People can't carry their Bibles publicly. They're not allowed to start new churches. Some are even stoned. They seem like they're barbarians. God, and spiritually they are. But transform all of these people into sheep of the Lord, people who are blessed. Oh, my God, transform humanity, that mankind would come to know their Creator. We sanctify ourselves on their behalf. And in the name of Christ, right now, I bless this wine. 
We adore you. We adore you. We glorify you. Father, we want the highest praises of the Lord to be in our mouths. Father, we want, O oh God, that the two-edged sword be in our hands, and it is. And the high praises are too. We will, right now, God, bless you with songs and with hymns and spiritual psalms. And wherever people may be, my God, they are receiving power both here and throughout the world. We bless the people watching on TV, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And now we bless all of you. Brethren, God is going to bless each of you as you praise him.